Okay, Meeville's designated a home team. They're wearing their black uniforms with the red helmets, black red numbers with the white trim. Grove City in their road uniforms, the white tops, white pants, blue around the top sleeve, and blue numbers with a really gold, shiny helmet. And they have a nice uniform here at Grove City also. Look down to my right, I see Bill McGee representing the PIAA. Bill's from the Connie Lake area. We see Bill a lot in the local playoff games. So, uh, Ed, real quickly, your keys for a Bulldog win? They have to minimize the mistakes, penalties, um, and they have to. the defense is going to have to tackle, and Isaiah is going to have to have a big game. No doubt about that. Logan Lutz is the key person for Meville to stop, along with Bradley Callen, their quarterback. The Eagles have a big offensive line. We'll get into that as the game goes on. But right now, the Bulldogs are going left to right. We'll be kicking off. Julius Ream will be getting it as soon as he gets the signal for the official. Officials are still pumping up the ground as they don't have the clock working yet. And that's the holdup right now. Everything is on 0, zero, zero for the clock. So uh, they're going to fix the clock right now. Uh, and Meeble kicks, but they weren't ready. So Ream gets a practice kick in. Deep for the Eagles, Ray. Well, to not change much of the formula from that win in, in week number nine, and you mentioned Logan Lutz. You look at his numbers from that game. Nine carries, 222 yards, averaging 24.7 a carry. But then the quarterback, Brady Callahan, talk about efficiency, 14 of 17 in that game. That's an 82% completion percentage, 183 yards in a touchdown. Their offense is so balanced. They're so big up front. Great technique. Yes. This is going to be key. You know, Meadville defensively, I think you got to you got to try to keep them maybe in the 20 range, and you've got a shot. So they didn't test the clock. That's evident before the game started tonight. Nobody came up to test no, the clock. That's back on 120. <laughs> there now we go. It's 12. Here we go. Right. Must be my presence. This was happening at Gannon last week too. Maybe my mere presence is, is making clocks malfunction. <laughs> we'll have. Uh, that's why you were late. Your clock was malfunctioning. Muhammad is, <laughs> Muhammad I'll get is, you later. Muhammad is deep. Moreski is also deep for the Eagles. As uh, Moreski and Muhammad are deep. Green boots it, and it's going to go to Muhammad. He gets it about the 14 to the 15. He cuts to his left. 25 has a hole. 35 Ooh. and finally brought down at the 40. But Joy a nice Green. return by the Eagles. Ed. That Julius Green made a nice tackle on that. He was, If he wasn't there... He would have been gone. Still be running. Mean, yep, I mean, it was a nice tackle by Julius stepping up in there. And before the first kickoff was blown dead, you could tell that Meadville was already set up. They wanted no piece of Muhammad. They wanted to go at Moroski both times, and they kicked it to Moroski there on the far hash. But the Eagles come out in their pistol formation, spread offense, two receivers to the right, two to the left. Callahan now with now motion man to the right. They flood the right zone. They're going to run the off tackle, and he gets about three yards. Wildcat three action yards. with Lutz. Yep. Good defense by the bull looks that Yeah, Deshaun uh, Wolford on the tackle on that one. So a good gain of four yards on first down. As we just started here, the D-10 championship game, the Eagles and the Bulldogs, a rematch from last year's game. These defensive ends got to contain that outside so that doesn't happen a little bit. Right now, the Eagles are going with their two receivers on both sides. Muhammad is in the slot next to Callahan. Muhammad goes motion. He stops there again. This time, Lutz is going to stop. He's going to throw a pass. He's got a receiver wide open, and he makes the catch for a long game. It's Callahan as looked like the D-back to me, Ed, had his eyes in the backfield. Yeah, that was John, uh, John Tate Brown there. He, he turned around <clears throat> and then just had his back facing the uh, – the receiver and the receiver just got behind him a little bit and made the catch. That was a Boomer Esiason esque play fake by Logan Lutz hiding the ball on his hip. Tell you what, dude, that's a big play. It hurt me the first time out. He's inside this time. Nice run by Trey Adams, the fullback. Tra Trey's a big boy. Uh, you, you feed him a lot. It's really going to open up their offense. And you know, City going quick. Got seven on that. Second and three. Back to the line. Callahan calling singers quickly. And again, fake to Adams. A pass out here on the right flank. Tackle right there. Deshaun Wolford on Deshaun the tackle. Deshaun Wolford, nice tackle by Wolford. And Ream comes into the tackle by Wolford. Ream realized he didn't have the angle on him, but Wolford was right there to step up and make the stop. Third, no, first down again for the Eagles as they are marching quickly after that big play. They get to the line of scrimmage. Callahan calling signals on the 13. He's going to stop and throw that slot pass outside again. He's got the corner, and he's going to go close to the first touchdown. Not nope. a touchdown, but close for it. It's a great seal block by Moroski. Yep. Yeah, he, 
he went on the outside. I wish somebody was out there helping him. But the, the cornerback had to follow his receiver back there. First and with they, goal with the the one. on the one yard line. Callahan calling soon. Look for the big fullback to get it. He does, Adamson. He walks into the end zone for a quick touchdown for the Eagles as they lead 6 0 with 10 30 to go in this first quarter. Didn't take them long, Ed. No, it didn't. They just marched right down the field with what, one minute and 30? Or, yep, 136 yeah. plays. 57 yards in a minute, 30. That big pass play, Ray, was the big one that broke the defense's back on that. Nice fake, as you said, and uh, they burned a corner. Yeah, I don't even know if you could call that a wildcat when they put Lutz in there. I mean, you do naturally because he's the runner, but they were running a jet series with a deep shotgun. Snap side, a kick is up and in. It's good. Snuck through there. So with 10.30 left in the first quarter, the Eagles seven, Bulldogs zero. That's 10.30 to go, Eagles are on top seven, nothing. Big plays killed the Bulldogs, first time to play the Eagles and then hurt them early on in this game. The Bulldogs will look to regroup as they will get ready to get the kickoff and it is a pooch kick and it's gonna drop and finally picked up. Johnson Brown. Brown is running laterally to his left and he has no place to go. And now he turns up field, 25, 30, breaks the tackle all the way. Oh. Got a flag against Bulldogs, Bobby, to the 38. Not a flag out there, it's gotta be probably. Another one, though. another one comes up. There's Initially to me, it looks like it, it's gonna be on Beeson. And if it is, it's a borderline call in my opinion. But Beeson was the one out there after Brown was doing a good job of running horizontally to try to get himself a lane on that I'm far sideline. I'm wondering if the second penalty is not unsportsmanlike. Maybe on. something was said yep. somewhere along those lines. Well, we'll find out right now. there was a late right flag here. coming in at the well, end. they got to keep their composure, that's for sure, right? This is a, and Ed, this is a championship game as Kilburn got the play from uh, Coach Collins, but right now the referees are conversing and they're really taking their time talking about this, guys. So, uh, not sure. I thought the flag was right where he about got tackled, it, Ed, but it, they're pointing way back. So, so this is uh, this is taking a long time. Let's see, the referee's now still conversing and gingerly walking away from each other. They had a referee with the white hat's gonna come and tell us. Here he comes. Personal foul against Meadville, declined. Hold against Meadville. All right, so Meadville did have two penalties, as Ed said. Yeah, Mead, uh, Grove City takes the block in the back because it's going to actually put Meadville back farther than the personal foul because, because, of, fall. because of where it happened yeah. on the spot. So, so they're going to jack gets, it back to the 15. Yeah, Meadville's all the way back to the 15. Something that's plagued the Bulldogs all season long has been penalties of stupidity, to say the least. And, and mistakes in games of this magnitude come Can't back to bite you. Not against this team. So Kilburn now, the Bulldog back at their own 15, first and 10. Grove City with their defense right where they want to be. Coming after the Bulldogs. He's going to pass it to Manning, goes to the 25. He's going to have the corner 30, 35. Good game by Manning and the Bulldogs on first down. That was a good blocking up front, especially the receiver. <coughs> he was out there blocking and got him a little extra yard. So, I mean, that's a good run right there to start off their uh, 20, first possession. 20 yard gain on first down by the Bulldogs. Manning just sometimes doesn't get enough credit for his speed because he's such a bruising inside runner, but Manning, he showed it right Manning, there. I think he's one of the best fullbacks in Northwestern PA. I really do. Gonna give it to Manning. This time inside, he's got a little bit of a hole. He shakes the tackle, keeps going. He gets about seven yards. He just bulldozed Kadir Muhammad and got about five extra yards after the point of that missed yeah, tackle. It's going to be second down and like two now. I mean, that was a good run right up the middle. Well, right. And those two runs, guys, is better with the Bulldogs showed the whole first time they played Grove City yet. Yeah. Their I mean, offense the first time was getting tackled in the backfield. It looked like Grove City was expecting something else, and then they yeah. shifted all to the left, and there was uh, a nice little gap up as, the middle. As I said, Coach Collins and his staff has tweaked a little bit of their running game tonight. Now to go to Wolford. Powell and Wolf is going to run right first over. down. And it's going to be, yep, first down to Sean Wolford on the old flip power. So Wolford, Meeva with two first downs early on here with 9.35 in the clock running. Grove City took about a minute and a half before they got their first touchdown. The kick was good. They lead 7 nothing on a very cold night here at Greenville High School. We're in the press box, so we're a little better off. Dogs come out. Kilburn leads them out of the huddle. And they're split back wing formation. They're going to give it to Manning. Manning looks searches, and he has no place to go. He had about a half a yard that time. 
getting into the backfield was Logan Minch, and he was able to trip him up. A good penetration there by the defensive lineman to make that stop. Yeah, we saw a lot of that the first time, and this is where the offensive line, Ray and Ed, really have to come off the football tonight. And, and you gotta also, as you hit him, you gotta drive him with your legs. You just can't hit him and stop. And right. Grove City being so strong up front. Uh, their defensive end, 170. Tackles, 245 and 240 inside. Gilbert now is gonna hand it. Not sure what Reem was trying to do there, but he was, he needs to run outside and he stopped himself before he took off. And that's not good running right there. You gotta get to the outside. Yeah, if there's nothing in there, you've got to at least try to stretch to it out outside. a little bit. He can't just look, keep looking in. I wonder what? if on a cold night he was just trying to make sure that he had the football secured. Could be. Beeson brings the play in for Meadville. Going to be third and nine and a half, the third and long. These are not the situations the Meadville offense likes to be in, either no. behind schedule on a third and nine. Gilbert calling signals. He's going to pitch it to Man Manning. Manning's trying to get outside again. He cuts back inside, keeps running. It's going to be about a yard short. So what do you think, Ed? Do you roll the dice here? What do you punt it? I, I think Coach is going to go for it. I mean, I see what they put. It looks like it's fourth and long. Fourth and two. Fourth and a long two. You know, it wasn't a bad block on the far side by Beeson. The problem was is he didn't hold it long enough and it forced Manning to cut his way back inside and trying to use his power to get to the first down. Big fourth down early on. See if Bulldogs go for it if they quick kick it. They put that in also this week. Gilbin calling signals. He's going to throw it to Manning. Manning's trying to get outside. Cuts back. Got the first down and more as he gets tackled about the 38 yard line. Good vision by Manning. You he know, Mabel, looking, go ahead. Mabel runs that toss sweep with them, and I, it works really well with Isaiah running that. I mean, they started that here about halfway through the season, being a lot of yards out of that. You know, something that, too, if you get it, of course, Greenville is stuck looking outside. Of and Morosky trying to make a tackle. Manning's a tough back to make an arm tackle when you're not in position. Flip power that time to Reem. He hesitates again, and he cuts back inside. And gets about two or three. That was, a, that was two two hard yards right there for Julius. He didn't want to go down. No, he didn't. Tackle made by big 55 for the Eagles. And he's a stud, that inside linebacker, Joe Kersnick, 5'8", 170 senior. And he has 63 tackles on the season. He got one yard, so it's second and nine for the Bulldogs on Grove City's 38 yard line. Oh, yeah, that's motion, motion on us, and you saw that. That was, uh, I think, uh, the right tackle maybe, or the right yeah, that 55 Joe uh, Kosick, he caused a lot of havoc for us the first time we met him. He sure him. did. He spent half of the game in the backfield next yeah. to Kilburn. Yes, he did. This is a penalty again. The Bulldogs again shoot themselves in the foot. As Ray said, this is an offense you really don't want to be behind the chains. So second and long for the Dogs. As they come out now, they are back out to 40 to the 42 to the Eagles. Fast moving first quarter, 645, second and 13. No, for me, compete this game you're going to want several you know drives that probably reach uh, somewhere between you know maybe the the five to eight minute mark time consuming keep moving the chains Kilburn now he's going to go fast got him open down the middle of the field oh, he's getting pass. handled gotta be a Nothing. flag wow. are you kidding me Oh my lord, I how is that not a flag? Yeah, Muhammad got definitely got away with a little that tug on the right arm of Julius A little Rain. tug, he wow. did it three he, times. He undressed him. And pushed him. He undressed him, that should have been a flag. A terrible officiating over that call. Wow. That was the sideline judge's call. Oh, Horrible. Wow. That was terrible. Grove City got away with murder on that play. I like the play call there too. Yeah, Good job was. taking a shot downfield. Yeah. Wow, and Muhammad knows he got away with one on that. Coverage was terrible. It was pass interference all the way. Holy mackerel. Kilburn now. And that was I don't understand. Yeah, no. Nothing. Fourth down and 13 now. He was going to punt. Good idea to punt here. Mental mistakes, mental mistakes. You gotta know to play, guys. So yeah, you false start that puts you behind. Yep. Pass interference wasn't called. Fourth and 13. So here we go. Muhammad's back to the 10. Good kick by Reem, he's gonna kick it to the corner. Nice kick, real good nice kick. Nice job by Reem. 
Down by. Here's a down by Ed. There's John Tate Brown. Okay, at about the three yard line. So Grove City has it on the three or four yard line. Yeah, Market it at the three. Market it at the three. So now the Bulldog defense has got to stiffen Ed and Ray. They can't give up and score right now. Right. They got to hold Grove City and get the ball back for the offense. Sure, and a terrifically executed punt right there by Ream doing exactly what you want to do, pin the opposition deep inside their own territory. All right, Gross City comes out, trips to the right, one receiver to the left. Callahan, Lutz is the quarterback right now. Lutz is going to take it on a, and he's going to get, get in. And right. Nice job by the Meville defense that time, getting Lutz after a yard gain. This Manning that flew in there and kept, Lutz saw Manning coming and he tried to cut it between the hash marks and Manning got Nice good form tackle down low to bring him down. Be really nice if Gross City put one on a carpet right now. <laughs> That'd be an opportune. Second and nine for the Eagles, 5.30. Eagles lead seven nothing. Trips to the right again, one to the left. Lutz in the Wildcat again. Lutz now is gonna roll to his right again. He's gonna roll way outside, he's gonna get the corner. And he's gonna get close to a first down if he doesn't have it. We gotta get off our blocks. Meeple not getting off their blocks. It's going to be very close. Let's see what they say. First down, Eagles. Let's run it all over the field. Right and now, now Callahan's in. Callahan in now. Two receivers on each side. Callahan this time hands it to the big fullback inside, and there he goes, and he got a good gainer. Six yard gain right there by the big fullback. Trey Adams. Boy, they have a complete offense. Don't they? Know? So many different variations, and they've got, you know, so many things to defend. Power, a power runner, kind of a in-between runner, speed and power with Lutz. Scat got, guy in Muhammad. And I got two backs and three backs. Looks like it's going to be inside again. And there's a, another first down for the Eagles as Trey Adams gets five yards for a first down. Yeah, that was a big hole that he just went walking right through, picked up the first down on. 4.44 to go in this first quarter, 7 nothing Eagles. Eagles score down their first possession, have the ball back. Callahan the shotgun, going to fake it. Adams bounces off, but he gets nice tackle right there. Yeah, Julius Reen came up. Came up. Yep. So, second and eight. Second and eight. Second and seven. Callahan calling signals. Got a motion this way. He's going to fake it. And he's going to keep it and gets Good. hit hard. Oh, that ball was hanging out there too, guys. You know, that ball was hanging out. He's going to put a helmet on that. That would have came out. Third and six, I'm yep. going to call. So Manning's intent was to try to jar that ball loose. Yes. He tried that. to put a helmet right on yep. the football, and he just missed because the runner turned slightly before the hit happened. Big third down for the Meville defense. They give him the punt here. That'd be great. You got four receivers on the right side. They have flooded the right side. Callahan by himself. As Meville comes on a blitz, he throws it out. And that ball's out on the ground. Good play. And nice job by the Meville defense. Bro City's lucky that wasn't complete. At a lost yard, so Gross City will be forced to punt. Yeah, he was like, oh, I hear footsteps. <laughs> I don't want to catch it. And Miles Moreland, he did yes. a good job of really squaring up to him because that was what the matchup that Grove City wanted on that. You could see that by allowing the Meadville Blitz to come in. They wanted to create a one-on-one -on -one matchup, but Moreland read that perfectly, and I think even if Green makes that catch, Moreland's in perfect position to make the tackle. Got to make sure they punt here. A.J. Mill is the punter. He's also a wide receiver. He's fast. Meadville's got to concentrate on the ball. They'll come off side. That's a high snap. They got to go get him. Oh, nice can. Got to tackle him. And they get him, him down on about the eight yard line. Landon Beck. Landon Beck. That was a high snap. Beck came flying up and put the tackle on him, guys. Big turnover. Now Meadville, Ray and Ed, has got to put it in the end zone. You, you know what? Landon Beck has been a big, big, big guy on special teams this year. I mean, he's had almost a lot of punts blocked. And then, you know, the speed that he has to come up there and tackle him, too. So. I mean, that was a really good play. Huge time for a botched punt, and yeah, this is a big opportunity for Meadville to take advantage of them. We talked about how big it would be for Meadville to avoid mistakes. Well, they need to take advantage when Grove City makes yes. them. Mike Grasso is in now on the offensive line, Ed, for somebody. So Grasso running out there. We'll have to see where he is. Gilbert calling signals. Give it to Manning. Manning comes back inside. He's falling into the end zone. Touchdown, Bulldogs. 
What was unbelievable about that was Joe Kosick had a shot at Manning and he did a little hop step right over top of him as he was down yeah, on a, the ground. Hey, for a big guy, Manning's got some good footwork. Sure. And then, you know, just, just his, uh, you know, presence to know where he was at when he was falling on his back to stretch over his arms over the goal line. Seven to six, Grove City. These are big points, Ray and Ed. Meva left a few of them on the board last week. They can't do it tonight. They got to get every point they can. Bex to hold them. Martin's a snapper. And Reams the kicker. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up and it is good. good. So with 3.28 to go in the first quarter, the Bulldogs 7, the Eagles 7. We'll be back with more after taking a quick 30 second timeout. Bulldog football and it was 94.3 and on the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network. Back at Greenville High School, we have Ray Reistoff, we have Ed Marin, yours truly, Mike Fiorello. 3.28 left in the first quarter. We are all tied up 7 7. Guys, just what the doctor ordered for the Bulldogs. Well, it was. I mean, you know, Grove City makes a mistake and then Meeble capitalize on it. And that's what you need to do, especially going against a, you know, a, a high caliber team that uh, can score, score points as well. Green ready to kick. We need better covers than the first time, guys. Let's see how we cover this one. Green boots again to the left side. Ball's taken on the 18 to the 20. 25, he cuts back in, and that time Evil gets a little better job and gets him down on the 32 or three yard Landon line. Beck again. Landon Beck flying in there making the tackle. Same directional kick they used on the opening kickoff, avoiding Muhammad going to Morosky on the far side. Got a one or two if Grossi has a reverse on that to make sure Muhammad gets the ball down the road. 34 yard line for the Eagles. First time they went all the way down the field, a minute and a half and scored. Second time they had a punt, the snap was high. Landon Beck planted the punter on the four, and next play, Manning did the rest. 31st rushing touchdown of the season. What a season Isaiah Manning's had. Well, last year had a great season, too, if you took the kid from Hickory and Jeremy Brown away. <laughs> sure. <laughs> he would have been the leading rusher. Callahan this time is going to give it to his foot, big fullback, and there's the tackle Isaiah. right there. Isaiah Manning says, hello, right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Good Manning's time. eyes not fooling him right there. He didn't fall for the fake jet. Red So it's second and 10 for the Eagles. It's the down guy on the scoreboard is a little late changing it. Guy it's probably cold. Guy on their scoreboard doesn't change right away either. <laughs> no, <laughs> second and 10, Callahan now with man in motion. I'm not sure what that play was. It's gonna go inside again and oh, they missed two tackles. That by Trey Adams though. I mean, but you gotta sit there. We I ran ran by him. They got to sit right there. Okay, so it's third and five. they're ready. It's time maybe. We have whistle blown. Not sure what that is. Should be third down. They still got it first and ten up there. Yeah. Clock is still on 328. The clock is frozen. The clock is probably frozen. It's so cold. Mm -hmm. So, and also the down should be on third down. He hasn't done that yet either. I Got remember the they, had, they had an issue with the, uh, they, they had an issue with the scoreboard right before pregame, remember, too. So right. you, you, met, you brought up a good point. It could be because of the be conditions frozen. right yeah. here. They'd the thing behind the board, you know, it, the controls it, the generated, it could be frozen. Huh. It could be a frozen you scoreboard. Might have to have um, the officials Coach, keep it down on the field. Coach Davis is looking out the window, very perplexed as he looks and trying to find out what the problem is. Right now, our defense is getting a little break. That's not a bad thing, guys. You know, the defense getting a little break is not a bad thing at all when you're playing a team that hurries up. Yeah, it's, Grove City was running their delay right yeah. there, and then th that's the situation where you start looking to the sideline yep. and you start getting an option of uh, changing yeah. it to three or four different plays, whatever signals you're getting from whoever's giving them out. PIAA officials are walking. Yeah, They're Pete Iacino was out there. Yep, and he's walking back to the officials. They're going to have to keep the clock on the field. I'm sure that's what he's saying. They got the down markers they can keep on the field and right. the score we can keep up here. So a lot of people will be looking at the umpire, and I know we, we, we're looking at them anyway because we don't have the play clock, and the umpire has to put the arm up in the air for the so, 10 seconds, something Ed was talking about last week. So, uh, third and four for the Eagles. I'm not sure how much time, but it's yard line. We've got to be in the two-minute range okay. somewhere in that vicinity because it has not run since the no. touchdown. Both referees went over to both sides, coaching staffs, and letting them know what they're going to keep the clock on the field, which is always good. No 30-second clocks here, as Amiville doesn't have them either. Some stadiums do, but it wouldn't matter. Just watch the ump. 
That's why it's DM. <laughs> well, you know, when that arm comes up, That's 10 it. seconds left you know on the play clock. Seconds. And by the way, a lot. I was I was looking into this after we had our conversation last week, gentlemen. Uh, Pennsylvania does not observe the 40-25. Uh -huh. Some athletic associations are Ooh. right now. We got lights out in the press box. Oh, we almost lost our power going back to the studio. Yeah, it also. popped right back on. But we're on a cell phone, so yeah, we should be okay. We won't right? lose it completely. Well, you just might have to put it to your we're ear and talk into it. Pl that's plugged in. Though. Yes. Oh, I see what you're saying. Third and four, they're going to fake it, throwing over the middle, and they got the first down and more. Boy, nice catch by Logan Lutz. He was there, the pass came right to him, and then he was corralled, but after a first down, and he was uh, kind of taken around there, Ed. Yeah, I see that. Ed's on his cell phone again. Okay, first and 10. In inside to the big guy Adams, and he's running right over everybody. He gets about nine and a half yards. Scoreboard went out totally, uh, Ray. And Trey Adams, not a fun night there for the defense. There he goes again, and this time the evil defense stops him short of the first down. You're going back to that uh, first down completion. I thought that uh, Julius Ream actually mistimed it by just a second because Ream was very close to coming over the top yes. and breaking it up. So it's third and about a half a yard for the Eagles. We'll see if they might fake it to Adams this time. Look for something big, Ray, because they have two downs to get this. Callahan calling signals. Lutz is in motion. Lutz fakes it, and then he goes the other way. He goes to Adams again inside, and this time he stood up. And let's see, it's going to be real close. Depends on the spot, and they're getting a good spot. Getting a good spot right now. Boy, what a job there by Whistler and Beck. And the high hit by Beck almost kept him from getting it. He did, but Grosset is trying to quick snap him. Fourth and a half a yard. The guy's going to get again. He gets stopped in. Oh, he falls forward. Oh, boy, he got three stops, and they couldn't hold them. Wolford and was one of them. Petskowski was another. He just kept his feet moving. Almost a great play by the Mevo defense. Well, he's, he slipped out of the arms of Collier. Then Moreland came up to help him in just that little turn at the end. And Adams is such a big body. So, Grant, if you can hear us, uh, see if we're on was, okay? Because people are saying we're not. First and 10, we're on the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network. Mike Firo, Ed Marin, Ray Rastoff, 7-7. Seven, seven. Grove City's on the march. This time we're going to give it to somebody else. Fake the handoff. Callahan throws a little pass outside. Meeville's all over that one. He's not going anywhere. Good defense. Logan Lutz is corralled after about a, a three-yard gain. Good defense that time. Yeah, Great. they get three, but you're right. It was red. You know, Meadville did a good job of not, uh, you know, of, of not letting their eyes fool them a little bit in falling for the – almost every time. I've seen a lot of spread offenses, Mike. I've never seen one where, you know, I've seen them fake the jet sweeps, but where the receiver – I'll get back to it in a moment. He goes this time. He's going to pitch it outside. And look at – Boy, he gets good blocking outside. They get good blocking. We're not shedding our blocks in the secondary. Just a little little toss sweep yeah. to that side with Green, who was the sidecar like in our, that formation. Our corners are getting blocked, but they just keep going sideways instead of shedding the block and sprinting upfield. The point I was going to do before that, Mike, is Lutz will come over, and he'll pretend like he's taking the handoff before yep. the ball is even snapped. I, I've never seen that before. I haven't either. 32-yard line of Meevil. Gross City on the march, first and 10. Callahan calling signals, and we got a flag, and that's got to be motion against uh, Grove City, and it is. Guy turned up field a little bit too early, right? The ball's not snapped. Got to wait until the ball snapped to turn a field, right? Yeah. That's a so that's a five-yard penalty against the Eagles. Not too many penalties tonight on either squad. You know, so the, have the Eagles have had, uh, you know, they've they've made some mistakes of their own. The botch punt so that set up Meadville yeah. at the eight-yard line. Yep. So now it's first and 15. Let's see who goes to the quarterback position, if it's Callahan or if they're in the. Uh, well, they've got the down in the distance on the scoreboard working, but the yeah. game clock's still not working. So we're early second quarter. Well, so he's going to call a timeout. Tyler Green was in a Wildcat. Timeout, Grove City. We'll take a short timeout, a 30-second timeout. Bulldog football on was and on the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network, 30 seconds. Back here at Greenville High School, Mike Furrell, Ed Marin, Ray Rostov, 7-7, Bulldogs and Eagles. Somewhere in the middle of the second quarter. We're not sure how much time. The clock's not working. It is first and 15 for the Eagles on the 37 of Meadville. And they're going to hand it off inside. And, boy, nice run right there by Taylor Green. He got five yards and ran over his tackler. 
So it's going to be second and 10 right now for the Eagles. They got their five yards back, Ray. Might be second and 11, looking at where they're setting it up at okay. uh, at the 33 yard line. So he was a quarterback, as this time looks like it's Callahan. He's going to toss it outside. And oh, he broke another tackle. Boy, Meville had him at the line of scrimmage and he broke his tackle. Well, what happened was Manning was trying to disengage with Lutz, who was blocking him on that side. And Manning almost had enough power to push Lutz into Adams, the ball carrier, but he could not shed that block. And I'm not sure what we got going on right here. Now they're, now the first quarter is ended. Oh, now That's it's the end of the first <laughs> quarter. I'm sorry, I thought it was before. So at the end of one it, it quarter. It happened to everybody here in the press box. So at the end of one quarter, it's seven to seven. Armstrong would like to say thank you for your generosity and donations to our Healing Heroes Initiative. With your help, we've raised the funds necessary to train eight service dogs from Guardian Angels to be donated to area veterans suffering from disabilities such as PTSD and brain injury, among others. If you or a loved one are a qualifying veteran and would like to apply, please visit medicalservicedogs.org and click on applications. Together, we can unleash the power of hope, the power of giving, the power to heal. Callahan now. Calling signal, he's got three receivers to his right. Now one goes in motion. He's going to run from the slot position. There he goes. Callahan pitches it outside. There's nobody here for Meadville. And nobody's got the pitch on that. An easy first down. Nobody is getting the pitch, man. Manning, again, shed a block and made that play, or else it might uh, go for six. But yeah, I'm impressed, and in, in, in you need that when you run a spread offense like this. You need wide receivers who are good at setting blocks, especially on the edge. And, you know, Grove City just going deep into this playbook with all these different variations of he's their offense. 23 looks like he's oh, there. Meva finally puts a man on. I know I'm off line, Eric. Now we're going to forget. Callahan's looking deep. He's got him again. Wide open. Oh, boy. Reen Logan. bit. Reen came right up, and the right receiver ran right by him for a touchdown. Eagles. Had his head in the backfield, as Coach always says. You well, can't have your head in the backfield. that little head and shoulder pump fake by Callahan got everybody looking to that side, and Lutch just seemed right up the and, middle between the hash marks and he was wide open in the end zone. And what happens, Ray, is if you're not looking at the receiver, you go bite on the head fake and the shoulder fake. If you're watching the receiver, you really don't see that fake. So it's 13 to seven Eagles is the extra point coming. It was 11.46 to go in the half, Ray. Looks like they got the clock fixed. Yes, they do. Let's see, the snap is good, the hole's good, the kick is up and that, it looks good too and it is good. I kind of so knuckled inside the left upright. So 11.46 to go in the first half. The Eagles 14, the Bulldogs 7. We'll be back after 30 seconds with Bulldog football on was 94.3 and the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network. And back here at Greenville High School, Ed Marin, Ray Reistar, if you was truly Mike Fiorella, 14-7 Eagles, 11.46 left in the first half. Bulldogs will get the ball on the kickoff. Ed, the uh, Eagles answered right back on Meadville's score. Yeah, now Meadville's offense, we'll see what happens after the kickoff but th their offense is going to have to sustain something if they're going to want to stay in this game. There's a pooch kick again, and let's catch it and go, and it's caught at 25 to the 35. Good field position for the Bulldogs on the 36-yard line. All your heads up uh, catching the little pop-up kick there. You know, that's what you got to do when you catch a pop-up kick like that. Just go, go in a straight line. Don't try straight. to do it. South, they with that. Trying to get. We'll find out here in a little bit. Uh, Grant Smith working hard behind the scenes. Uh, fixed back up. But yeah, City missed the play. So yeah. Meville now in their wing T formation. Manny behind Kilburn. Ream goes in motion. Going to try to absolutely nowhere. And our offensive end on that side didn't block because he And we'll come in with a play. Our offensive end blocked nobody on that play. And in 10, probably saying that's why I looked to cut back in, guys. Hey, they, <laughs> they got the clock going. Yeah, the clock's back. Yeah. Good. They fixed that as you were trying to fix the uh, was problem. And in 10, put the dogs on their own 30. Line. He's going to shoot through at at least four yards. Good run by Isaiah Manning. This guy here marking the ball doesn't like it. He should be on the line. So third and six, Ray, and then that's a tough one for the dogs. 
Yeah, third and long. They need to get, you know, need to pick up this first down to keep the clock going. You know, they want to, you know, match point for point with this team. If not, like I said, it's going to be a long. Third and six. They come out. Reem's going to go in motion. They're going to. He completes it, and it's going to be a first down. Kilburn to Deshaun Wolford in the old waggle play. Wolford was wide open. Nice pass by Kilburn. Nice catch by Wolford. We're really good play call right there. You know, they expected them to run, and then just threw the little waggle pass to Deshaun Wolford, and, and he picked up the first down. Let me tell you the change in that play. Did you see Reem motion the other way? Yes. What that does, Ed and Ray, they just put it in this week. It makes the linebacker move more to the middle of the field. He has a longer way to go to catch Wolford and cover him in a flat. Great play design they put in this week. Nice touch on that ball by Kilburn, too, leading the receiver perfectly there in Wolford. Now they're going to pitch it outside to Manning. Manning looking to get outside. He's running hard. He's got six yards right now. He spins for about one more. Good run. They've run that play really well tonight. Yeah, I'll take a second down and four right now, especially, you know, with 9.45 left in the second quarter. Now we're in their territory, which is, well, we've been in their territory, sorry. But it's all right. We're in their 43-yard yep. line. As Ed said, it's 14 to 7. Eagles, Meeble trying to answer, 9.30 to go in this first half, the clock running. Bulldogs made a big first down on third and four. Nice pass from Kilburn to Deshaun Wolford in the flat. Kilburn now calling signals. Meeble, they're split backfield, going to give it to Ream. Ream cuts back inside, he lunges forward, gets about two yards. And a late flag, Red. you got to be kidding me. My flag was after the well, play. Oh, no, it looks like Deshaun Wolford's down. We got a late flag. Yeah, Wolford is definitely down. I, mean, I don't this know could, this, this could go against Grove City. Yeah, we could ho only hope. <laughs> Manning was the one trying Wolford's to coming out. That means block John. on that right side. Uh, what are we doing here? Was that third down? No, it's third down now. So why? Well, that might do a little Wildcat. Landon Beck's coming in for Colin Kilborn. Meva had problems with this Is last week. Another illegal, illegal block yep. below oh, the waist was called. That's terrible. We had, what was it, six of them last week. That chop is, block. Why do they keep doing that? Stop chop blocking. It's only allowed in what they consider the free zone once you get past it, what they consider that free Pat's zone. Pat Kowski was in it. Yeah, outside the tackle. Yeah. Decides to join the hole. So it's second and forever right now. Second and Here, Ed. I expect him to do so. Is Beck the quarterback? Beck. What about? Ball to the 40. Don't stop. He's going to go outside and he goes to the good game by Landon Beck. And the fact that he was just maybe a threat to throw the ball for a second, it took some of their corners like Callahan and them and maybe kept them from pursuing that play a little bit quicker, and that's what made that play work. It's a nice play. Got to use it when it's closer. Though. Now it's going to be third and 17 for the Bulldogs. Kilburn back in a quarterback. So as Ed said, look for Landon. New play they just put in. like that play, Ed. Got some speed out there. Oh, he's fast. <laughs> third and 17. And now we're going to go back to pass. Kilburn throwing the ball over the middle of the field to nobody. He just threw that to nobody. There was nobody there. Uh, he through. got hit, and that's what changed the trajectory of that ball as he took a hit from Grove you know. City's number 72, Nick Smither, that uh, hit him, and that's what made that ball knuckle out of his hands. Yeah, Colin will stand right in there, and he'll wait till the last minute to throw it, and that's what I like about him. I mean, he'll take he'll take that punishment to get it out there. So, so the Eagles now get it back. Good field position on their own 42-yard line. They're ahead 14-7. to seven. Big part of the game here, Ed and Ray. Bulldog defense got to come up with something big. Don't want them to put another one in. Boy, that penalty killed their offensive drive, too. Really a big penalty. Meva was moving a football. Oh, sure, it would have been a second in short as Boy, opposed to, uh, you, you know. They got a stack receivers now. Lutz is in motion. He's going to get the, nope. Callahan throws it over and wide open again. Again, nobody covering them. Touchdown, Eagles. There's a flag on the far side of the field at the 41-yard line. It's going to go against the offense on this, unless it, unless they're going to call uh, offsides on Meadville. Muhammad just uh, had a big celebration. It has yeah. To, yeah, it has to be because you can see next. Uh, Lights been on the There's far nobody. side of the field through that flag as well, the ball City's was not in even, the air. They're not even celebrating. So again, though, what a what a play fake. 
I think somebody <laughs> jumped Black off. Black Callahan. Lutz had a nice little play fake on a long Who pass play. Who did he throw that to? That was Muhammad. So uh, why isn't he covered? He's a receiver. Why are we covering Miscommu our mis Miscommunication. I mean, oh, sometimes it happens. I mean, it happens at all levels. Oh, boy, Ed, it was procedure. Thank God for small favors. I thought he might have jumped off. But you can see Grove City not even jumping up and down after they saw that flag. So, touchdown for Grove City. He's called back. They lead 14 to 7 with 8.39 to go in the <coughs> first half. They have the ball on there right now. Why is it first and 10? Because it. Huh? Oh, before. Huh? Well, they blew the whistle. They still got to mark it yeah, off. They're yeah, mar they're waiting. They're waiting. Oh, okay. The, ump the umpire's waiting to gotcha. count it down. So it'll be first and 15, There we go. Right? It's not a loss of down. It wipes out what would have been a 58-yard touchdown. Ooh. Meadville catches a break, but yeah, now got, you got to make gotta, sure you can't let that happen again. Yeah, we got to fix that, whatever we're doing there. So they're going to go, they're gonna go right back to that. Both Lutz and Callahan, again, uh, they must have uh, watched a lot of tape of Boomer or Sison for back in the day, that little just hold the ball on your I'm hip. Not play I'm not fake. putting Callahan or Lutz and Boomer Sison. No, but I'm of. saying that he they was the one way to go who, to was, that who was the master of yeah, that. But he, but he still didn't win a, a Super Bowl, so he went back. <laughs> <laughs> he, got, he got in one. Typical Steeler fan. Oh. Inside, and off to the big guy Adams, and he rumbles and stumbles and gets about four or five yards. I'm a Dolphins fan, so I'm not a Bengal fan, so I don't care, but I just had to drop that in there because that's in the Actually, booth. with that roll, after he hit it, they gave him, they marked him up for about a seven-yard game right yeah, there. Yeah, they're giving him extra yards every time. He's a tough kid. <laughs> He's a tough kid to bring down. He's a down. big boy. He's a big young man. He's got a cast as, on his as hand, As Ray he? said, they run inside, outside, and throw the ball all over the place. And there goes Callahan back to pass again. He's going to throw it back to this side. Little flanker screen. Nice moves. No tackles. And there he goes, Muhammad. Muhammad. He's going, going, going. He gets tackled on the 30. There were three Bulldogs right you there. Nobody after him. They stood there. The thing of it is, I've seen two guys on Trey Adams. He has a cast on and I'm telling you right now, yep. they're not going to throw it to And them. then they just brought A.J. Stay Miller. Stay away from Trey Adams. A.J. Miller with just that simple little hitch, and they run that screen on the far side across the green and get big yardage out of it to the Meadville 30. First and 10 for the Eagles as they had their way on the offensive side of the ball tonight. Callahan back to pass, looking, 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 looking. He's going to get hit Isaac. after he's good, but a Meadville defensive line. Isaac Whistler. Whistler is one of the And it's second and a long nine for the Eagles. They're in four down territory. 7.40 the clock moving. They're up 14 to seven Eagles over the Bulldogs. A little stoppage here as the Eagles get their play from their sideline. Look on their wristband, they got it. Callahan's gonna hand it to the big guy. He's gonna run off right tackle. He's gonna get good yardage. Got about six yards. Me, me vote right now, Ray, and Ed on those run plays, we're catching. We're catching the running back. When that hit, and we're catching him. So it's third and about five. five. Yep. Four down, two downs to get five yards. Let's see if Meville can come up big here. Looks like they got three receivers. I don't know if we're going to cover these guys. Who's got the slot? And it goes that play that's been driving us crazy. Going to inside. And he's not Good getting stuff. it that time. Good stuff that time. Dustin Beck, one of them right there. Good job by Bexter. And they went with that trips package, trying to get everybody maybe to pay attention so to that side of the field. Beck and Ben Call, you're in hey, on that. That big, was a good play. Big fourth down here, gentlemen. You got to believe you, you're looking at the big fullback getting the ball here, Ed. Yeah, or or <laughs> he's gonna run it outside. Trey Adams. Yeah. He hasn't been stopped yet. I give it to the big number guy, number seven. Six twenty-five. The clock moving here in the first half. Fourteen-seven Eagles. Callahan calling signals. He's going to run the option. He's going to go inside. Nice play, He's Isaiah. Nice job by Manning. No first down time. Good read on that. How Bulldogs come up quick. Manning does and puts him on the turf. We change possession. How good has he been Man, in this I game? Look, look like Isaiah put some diesel fuel in his uh, tank. I think Old there's Mack only been about well, maybe possibly four or five plays where we haven't mentioned his name uh, on defense. He's been a he, monster. How good has he been all year for the Bulldogs? Awesome. Offense and defense. So uh, Ray. Six minute drive would be perfect for the touch ball to start the second half. Remember, I'll be leaving here about two minutes to get on the field. We're all happy about that. Oh, Kilman calling signals. 
He's gonna run to Wagle. He's got him open. Throw it to him. There it is. Nice cut. There and you go. And it goes back outside Wolf, and he protects the football. Good play on first down. I like that pass on first down. I do too. <laughs> what a he stop cut. He yep. just stopped all of his momentum, and Logan Lutz went flying right by him as he just was a. And that's not easy to do on a cold night on turf like this. That's probably got a little bit of dew on it, and it's probably kind of slick. Second and two, your meteorologist report brought to you by Ray Rice. <laughs> <laughs> Second and two ball on Bulldogs on their own 36 yard line. Kilburn calling signals. Gonna give it to the big man Manning and Mac gets a first down. Right at yep. Oh yeah. Good pick up of four yards right there. Back Mac truck Manning up to the Amiibo 40 yard line. Five to go in the first half. Bulldogs seven. The Eagles 14 for the D10 championship game. It's been a game. Lance Craig on the tackle for Grove City, but the, and that's it. I'd like to see people maybe do that a little bit more. They're calling those little waggle pass plays yeah. on first down because then it gets yep. you in the second and third downs that you like as an offense in the wing tee. Kilburn calling signals, Meeble in their wing tee formation. Yes, and they went early again, five yards Meeble. I thought they left early again to shoot themselves in the foot. That's gonna be first and 15 from their that's, own that's, 35. That's been killing Meville in this game. They're down by seven, Ed and Ray, and they really stopped, after the first time, they've stopped themselves since then. It's been the penalties that's killed them right now. And Ed, you and I have seen all year long. Mm -hmm. We led the region in penalties. And that's a mental mistake right there. So, first and 15, the ball back on their own 35, 5 520 the clock moving. All, both teams have three timeouts. Oh no, Grove City has two, they took one. Meeville has three. And now we're not sure what we're doing here. The center has the quarterback. Oh boy, what are we doing? Another penalty against That should Meeville. be, that should be. No, we moved, the center moved. Jacob Martin moved again. I don't know what he's doing. Oh man, you gotta be in the huddle. You gotta know what's going on if you're the center. Jeez. You know, as soon as he came out, Ed and Ray, when he turned around and asked Kirby, he knew we were in trouble. I mean, come on. Coach Collins is disgusted. He looked him down at the sideline. That's 10 yards of penalties. Now it's first and 20. That's the second drive. I mean, you had the last drive oh. with a block below You're the waist. You're in a huddle. Don't leave back. the huddle if you don't know what the snap count is. Wow. Gilman again is going to look to pass. He's throwing it in the middle. Threw it too low, he had a receiver open, he threw it low. Sean Wolf, who was open. Yeah, just a little yeah, bit he behind could, him. He could, took a shot after that one. Yep. And that's where sometimes those waggle throws, you know, when the quarterback doesn't get, have an opportunity to kind of stop, plant, and throw, that can be up. a tough pass to complete, especially going across the grain. Second and 24, 53. And this is big, folks, because me was only down by seven, but you don't really want to give Grove City the football the rest of this half, Ed and Ray. Sure. No, you don't. So Kilburn calling signals. Here we go. He's going to inside handoff to Manning. Manning bounces off two tackles. Oh, Ooh, almost face got mask. To, almost got to the outside. Oh. His hand on his face mask. Yeah, you saw that, Ray. I know you did. Lutz might have gotten a piece of it. It was Craig down below, and Craig, I'll tell you, might have saved that from being a big run because Manning was trying to get to the sideline, and he had the angle past the secondary if he would have been able to get into that second, third level. I look for a toss sweep. Third and 13. Nope. Manning inside. Manning busts, and it's going to be about fourth and eight, and you're going to look for a punt here. And here we go. Try to get Ream to work his magic again, again like he did early in the game. Again. Grove City's not stopping us. We are stopping ourselves. Well, yeah, second drive in a row. I mean, if it was drive back to back false start penalties. Four that minutes to go in this. And two timeouts in for the Eagles. They got plenty of punt. Good. Muhammad, can, he's got two punt returns this year. Self. Snap is good. Reem. Kick is a little line drive. Kick's going to hit the turf and run. It's going to go to about the 30-yard line. It's stopped. Good kick by Reem. You don't want Muhammad running the ball. So, Ray and I, I got to ask you this. We're going to keep it here. If you grow city, the play action pass has been open all night. You got to see that's going to happen in this sequence. I got to believe it's coming. What do you sure. think? You just got to make sure your eyes don't creep into the backfield in that situation. Watch the quarterback. Watch for those play fakes, especially hiding the ball on the hip and. Yep. To stay home, 
Read your correct keys. You know, Nevo's moving the ball tonight. We're just shooting ourselves in the foot with penalties. First and 10, Eagles on their own 30. They have two receivers to the right, one to the left. Callahan calling signals. Now he stops and looks over and gets the play. Trey Adams is a side card in the backfield with him. Muhammad split to the left. He's the speedster. That said, don't worry about the guy with the cast. He's not going to catch the pass. Even though moving their defensive line. Callahan back pass under pressure again, wide open. There was your play action pass, Mike. Oh my God, why don't we, why don't we it's do Muhammad. that? It's Muhammad. 70 yards. We're not covering anybody. They ran it three times, wide open three times. Twenty to seven, Eagles. They're gonna keep using that play. That play's been there all night. Wow. What's interesting in in this, I don't know how much it would probably have a lot to do with the play, but I'm looking at the sideline. Grove City has five different assistant coaches that are giving signals to the offense. I don't know if I've seen that at the high school level. Snap, the hold, the kick to the extra point looks good, and it is good. So with 3:24 left in the first half. Grove City 21, Meville 7. We'll be back after 30 seconds as you're listening to Bulldog Football on Was 94.3 FM and on the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network. He's not supposed to. He's not supposed to play to run. Here we go at the 20, 25, running sideways, cuts back inside to the 32-yard line. Meville's 32. That's where Meville will set up shop with 317, and that is who on the return? John right? Brown. Was that John Brown? Yes, sir. So Meville now with 317, down by two touchdowns. They will get the second half kickoff, so maybe they can get a quick touchdown here. And boy, you just go back, you think about those missed opportunities, two good drives that just penalties. huge penalties push yep. them backwards. The block and you got the... Uh, Right, but you can't Two take motion. anything away from Grove City. I mean, they, they're, they're establishing the run, and as soon as they establish the run with Trey Adams, Outside goes boom. Manning, and Manning's going to have to stop and get hit on behind the line. No blocking in that play at all. None. When, once they establish that run, second there's the pass and there, right? 12 right now. Excuse me, Ed. Second and 12 with three minutes to go in this first half. Not taking anything away from Grove City, but they have not stopped Meville. They Meville stopped themselves on the last two drives, and that's what we're saying. Nothing to do with their offense. 2.45 on the clock running. Gilburn brings him out. Be some split to the left. Oh, boy, when I, Meville right now is getting manhandled on the line of scrimmage. No kind of, blocking at all. You have that sense that the Eagles are like the Sharks. I know yeah. it's you know a cliche that gets used a lot, but they're 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 smelling the water, the blood in the water, and, and circling around. And no, because for Meadville, for, you know, from my perspective right now, I think you don't score on this drive. This game could possibly get away with you because with Grove City's offense, uh, you know, they're going to have over. It may be probably like a, maybe a minute and a half if they get the ball back. If Meadville doesn't convert here, they can score in that time. They've proved it. Third and 12, two minutes to go in this first half. Gilman back to pass. He's going to throw a yard gain. Reem makes the catch, but for not for too many yards. Good thing he caught it. I thought the defender might have had a shot at the ball if it was a little over him. And I, as he was getting pressured, if he has a little bit more time, if he's going to go for the second option on that, his second option would have been Cialo, who was. Shallow. Shallow. Of right open down the field. Yeah. He locks on the receiver. He's young. So, 27 with one. Grove City took a time. I'm not sure how many timeouts they have left. Meville short of a play. All this time you have in a short of a play. I yeah, they did. all of a sudden Shante Brown had know? to shoot. Got looked like he got shot out of a cannon out onto the field. All this time he doesn't know they're in punt team. Again, that's a mental mistake. Here's a kick. It's going to hit the ground. See, the problem is now is you know we don't have the angle. We're going to see uh, what the linesman on that far side where he's going to rule it, and they're walking into Meadville territory to the 45-yard line. So it, 
looked, from our perspective, it looked good coming off his foot, but then it started knuckling towards that far side. And, you know, those li the head linesmen and linesmen that always have that view down there, let's see where it goes out of bounds. Well, boy, yeah, boy, it's gut check time for the Meanfield defense right here. It's been a second quarter dominated by the Eagles. Sure. With 7-7 seven, seven at the end of but, one. You know, maybe you get a bad snap, a turnover, something. You, you need we something got, here we defensively. got to make sure we're ready to cover people. But I'll tell you what. Callan back to pass, looking, 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 throws it outside, a little delay pass. On, guys, get down low on him. Well, Manning run across the field to make that stop. Basically, Callahan, he tried to run the fake option. He knew he was in trouble, and Lutz was his safety valve, and Lutz was just camped out in the right flat, and Callahan was able to get it to him before he went down. Lutz had uh, 10 receptions coming into tonight's game. Ray for 648 yards. That's pretty good for 10 receptions. Now he's definitely a versatile player. Wildcat again. Yep, he's going to run. He's going to tuck it inside, and he's going he's to be short of it first time. Clock continues to run to go in the first half. Meeva uh, wants that clock to motor. Collier helping Manning with that stop again. Isaiah Manning is playing the best defensive games. I mean, I've only seen a handful. You've seen the right. middle. He's going to throw it right over again and was letting him catch the ball. Yeah, I mean, this is the part of the field where you know, you, you gamble with that soft coverage because you don't want to give anything up behind you, but you allow the team to keep moving the sticks. 35, seven seconds, the clock moving. Callahan calling the pass. He's going to, he's got time to throw. He throws a little swing pass out in the flat. No, nope. there's a flag for Holden. Finally calling. I tell you what. And the referee that, threw it finally, right. I mean, he was held and bear hugged. They finally called <laughs> he, the hole. He almost wow. hit Logan Mitch with the I'm flag. I'm telling you. That was a takedown. As he went to throw him. That was a takedown right there. You know, there's got to be a hole. He took him down. Well, this, uh, at least yeah. in the short term right now, really helps Meadville yeah, because it happens definitely. at the spot. And also, too, Ray, use some clock, too. That sure. Up. So it's down to 25 seconds left. And it looks like they're going to count it off from the 31-yard line. Yeah. Big takedown there. At least initially, yep. There it is. It's going to go back to the 41. Well, first and 24, which doesn't mean much to the way Gross City's been throwing the ball. i got to watch that play action yeah. pass right now. And, and now you're back to it. Now you don't mind them throwing something underneath and in front of you. Well, you just don't want them up. getting behind there you. There it is, over the middle. And it's incomplete. Good coverage oh, that, that time on left. He threw that into triple coverage. You had Manning, you had Ream, and you also had the linebacker, the middle linebacker, Beck drop underneath into coverage on that play. Not sure if they're trying to get at least 10 yards. Maybe they have a field goal kicker. They got 20 sure. yards in two timeouts. You know? Or excuse me, 20 seconds and two timeouts, but they've got a third or a second down and 24. Three receivers to the right, one to the left is Muhammad. And now the receiver goes, so there's the two to the left. Callahan looking to the middle. Get open for a touchdown. Wow. There he goes, touchdown, Grove City. How does that happen? I don't know, it's been happening all I mean, night. You had Muhammad all just night. wheel out to the sideline, and it's going to be a 41 yard pitch and catch from Callahan to Muhammad, and that was so close. Meeble was so close to getting Callahan in the backfield and sacking him, it would have put them into scramble mode. Even though they had some timeouts left, they would have had to make some decisions. It would have been a third down and long. Just This just in, you might want to cover him. Wow. 27 That's, to seven. E even, even on the wheel route, wow. you, you can't expect to lose a guy like Muhammad. Kid. I don't know what's going on. Snap, high snap, kick is up and no good. So, Tyler Perry with the kick block. 11 seconds to go, 27-7, Grove City. It's been all Grove City in the second half as they are running right through to Meville secondary, wide open. Here we go. And we have a stop. Not sure what the referee was doing there. Yes, I, you heard uh, Professor Briggs and our good friends over here on uh, 96-7 doing the game for Mercer County. And uh, Mohammed three catches, 123 yards, two touchdowns. Like I said, 111 yards on the two touchdown receptions. He is quite a player. He is a good player, but he's wide open. There's a little pooch kick. Meeble has it. And on their own 45-yard line. Rose City went for a little onside kick there. Why not? 
That was a terrific play by Chandler Edwards sure because was. that ball took a tricky bounce. hop. Yes, Chandler was there, made a nice play. So with eight seconds to go, the Bulldogs will see what they try to do. And that was a good job by not committing a penalty there by the kicker because now it is illegal for you to do the high hop onside kick uh -huh. where it takes one bounce and goes okay. high in the air. Uh -huh. Not allowed to do that at the high school level anymore. So we did a good job of executing that and keeping it as a legal kick. Kirby now hands it to Isaiah Manning, gets one yard, and that's going to be the end of the first half. So at the end of the half, it is the Eagles 27, the Bulldogs 7. We'll be back with halftime activities. We'll take a five-minute break and come back as you're listening to Bulldog football on WAS 94.3 FM and on the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network. All right, here we go. Meeple will get the second half kickoff. Grove City's ready to kick off. The Bulldogs will go left to right. If you have a radio dial or whatever you're listening to, there's the kick, and he's going to boom at this team deep. Picked up right there by Jonte Brown. He's running sideways, looking to cut up field. He has no blocks, and he gets to the 32-yard line. He's just a little rumbling, stumbling. Looks like he could have hit that hole a little bit sooner John instead Wolfers. of stopping. Yeah. Number five for the Bulldogs, that is. Ben Collier. Ben Collier is number five? Yes, sir. Ben put a little, tough little hit on at the end of that run there. <laughs> kind of like that. Took his man and kind of drove him into the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> I think his man thought the play was over. Ben said, I don't think so. <laughs> He'll be back next year, Ben Collier. Yes, he will. Nice play. Okay, here come the dogs. First and 10 on their own, 33 in their wing T formation. Calber Kilburn looking both ways, calling signals. Inside. Oh, nice run by Manny Brakes to the outside. 550, he could go 40, 35, 30, all the way down to the 18 yard line. No flags, what a run by Manning. Wow, Ray and Ed. Hey, he hit that hole quick. And like Ray was saying earlier, he might, you know, he, he's a big back, but he's got a burst of speed. You got to respect it. Does what every good back does too. Once he gets to the sideline, he switches that ball to the outside arm. So if somebody comes in from behind and tries to chop it out, it's going to go out of bounds. I tell you what, too. Coach Rich is right there, talking to his wideout, and and he's telling his wideout if he made a decent block, he went and went the whole way. Here we go. This time, Reem flip power cuts it back inside, outside gets about three or four yards. Nice run by Reem. Wolf got knocked backwards. He tried to block, and that's that wing block. And I was telling you about the wings got to crash down, and that time Deshaun went to crash down, and this man just threw him back in the backfield. <laughs> Sean got up Sometimes like, it gets the best of you. Sometimes <laughs> it gets the best of you. Second and seven for the Bulldogs inside the red zone. They have the ball on the 15-yard line of the Eagles. So just with the doctor order, they have the Bulldogs. Ed and Ray can put one in. Kilburn now calling signals. Manning behind Kilburn. Wolford goes in, goes to Manning, tip throws, and he breaks the tackle, breaks another tackle, rumbles forward. Going to be you third can, and about four, I think. Got about three yards on that, I think. You can see the Eagle defenders, boy, they're really going for that ball. They're yeah, trying to strip that. It, as Manning had a death grip on that ball as uh, Nir Muhammad was desperately trying to get two arms in there to rip it out, and he couldn't. Muhammad might want to say, though, Ray, maybe I don't want to tackle uh, Manning that much. I'm a wide out, and I'm open all night. Third and three. We'll flip power. Uh, we'll free it. I don't know if he Looks got like money he's yards. He's no. close. Whoa. Let's see. Just okay. Now Just the other short. judge. Yep. About a yard short. So it's fourth and one. You know the dogs are going to go inside sure. here now. Nine yard line. Need one. Everybody's going to be looking at Manning. Do you give it to Manning or do you give it to Green? Manning. Okay. We got to come off the ball then because they're going to be. Pinching inside here, Ray and Ed. Those two big defensive tackles are going to be pinching. And their linebacker is right up on the line. Gilbert calling is going to pinch to Manning on a sweet play. Man, he's going to go to the outside, and he has it for the first down. That was a good call by the coaching staff, Ed and Ray, not to go inside because the tackles were pinched in, and Manning was able to elude some run. It looked like he could have probably cut it up a little bit sooner. I think he would have gained a little bit more yards instead of, instead of trying to stretch it. if they were they were trying to bait him into that. Did you see the splits between yes. the two defensive tackles yes, between exactly. the center and the guards? Yep. And then they went outside and it worked. Yeah. Anyway. First down and goal on the seven yard line of Grove City, 940 the clock moving. Eagles lead 27 to seven. So right now, Kilburn running out of the huddle with his teammates. People are impressed with the way Manning's running tonight and they should be. Green goes in motion. He's gonna give it to Mack Truck Manning inside, he has nothing. 
That line got nowhere on that one, Ed. The line got knocked right back. Yes, they no did. No movement by the offensive line at all. I think maybe he gained a half a yard on that. I think they're going to call it second and goal from the six. And a game on yard. Eagles got three downs against six yards. Shallow coming in with the play. I wonder if you called the waggle pass on this play. When the ream going in motion, yeah. you know, yep. Wolf has been open on that all day. That, they would never expect a waggle pass on this down. Might catch him flat footed. Gilburn runs up to the line. He's got shallow split to the right. Got split back. There goes walking in motion. There it is, Ed. Wow, well, boy, did I call that play. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Yes. Oh, I love it. I called it, and it was there. Oh, yeah. Great job. Wolfen went in motion. Reed went out to the flat. The backer couldn't get there. Nice pitch and catch it. You, you know, when they lined up in that formation, I was like, yeah, it's going to go that way because uh, Wolfen went in motion the opposite way. Great and call. Great call by the coach. And staff. hey, Colin Kilmer put that ball right where it was supposed to be. Right too. where it's supposed to be. Big extra point here for the dogs, and we're not sure who's in. In and out. In and out. We're running. We're going two here, Ed? Looks like it. Nope. No, they're going one. Okay. Beck's the holder. Get many points Martin's as you can. Martin's the snap. Ream, we got to get this. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up, and it is good. So at 8.42 to go in the first half, the Eagles 27, Meeville 14. Nice drive by the Bulldogs, Ed and Ray. All right, here we go. Ream no, not to get the ball <laughs> to the 20-yard line. Paskowski, 25. He's looking to his right. 30 cuts inside. He got good field position. Ball, ball, ball. Ball's, out. Ball's out. Let's see. Oh, boy, the ball was out, and Gross City got it. Oh, that would have been a big turnover for the Bulldogs. That and was Gross a City recovery by two. Davion Say. Davion Say. And I like what the Grove City coaching staff did right there. They put Lutz out there because yeah. Yeah. Meadville has been kicking the ball away from Muhammad the entire right. game. So instead of Morosky this time, they put Lutz in on that near wow. hash. Almost. And Lutz gets the return. But boy, Meadville, that would have been a huge momentum oh, swing boy, huh? in the game if he would have been able to recover that. Yep. The ball was there. Say, is that Ron Say, son? Say? Yes, Davion Say, number two. Played, his uncle played third for the th Dodgers. Ron? Ron Say. Ah, what, the Penguin? <laughs> yeah, the Penguin. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Lutz is in the backfield. He fakes and He's going to run it, and he's got blockers. And oh, nice tackle right there by Manning. You know, and I, I, I saw the back. I was watching the safeties there, and then they actually stayed there and waited. To, to see if the back had the ball or not. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. Second in five for the Eagles with eight minutes to go in the third, 27-14 Eagles. Meeble just scored to start the second half. Eagles almost turned it over to the Bulldogs, but they recovered that kick. As Ray said, that would have been sweet. Callahan's in a slot. Lutz is the quarterback in the Wildcat. He's going to run it again right up the middle. And he's not going too far this time. He got a yard. And a host of Bulldogs in on the tackle, including Destin Beck, and who comes off from the bottom. Big number one, Manning. Who else? Manning's probably got a plethora of uh, tackles this game. Yeah, if he Third and three. Little dog all... bone stickers for every tackle. This helmet oh, would be covered by now. <laughs> Third. In fact, the dogs ran out of stickers. They didn't put any on this week because Coach Collins said they ran out of them. In order enough, I guess. Third and three. Want a press call? Motion and Lutz. Fakes the ball. Now he's going to go back to the inside. A big Trey Adams first down and more as he runs uh, over a couple oh, tackles. Oh, that Trey man. Adams is a tough guy. Yes, he is. 58 and 51 on the tackle. Dustin Beck is 58. Who's 51, Ed? Tommy Pollard. Tommy Pollard on the tackle. Little Tomo. I was just talking to his dad down there. He's like, oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Now we got a... Looks like there's a flag. <laughs> there's no flag down, so I'm not sure what the holdup is here. Uh, you're at the Grove City side. So let's see what's going on. Referee's now running around with some kind of a holder or a shoe. Bringing a shoe back to the Meville <laughs> side. One of the Meville players ran out of his shoe. So let's see. Okay, so it's first and 10 for the Eagles on the Meville 49 yard line. <laughs> Landed Beck's shoe, they found it. Found Beck's shoe. Must have left that in the kickoff. Lutz fakes it, looking to pass. This time he's under pressure. Oh, nice job. Lutz got it, and he's not going to. He goes down. 
Good defense Extra. by the Bulldogs, and that time the secondary had stayed on their man. I was just getting ready to say that. Julius stayed on his yep. man. He came up there to, to get him before yep. he ran by him. And that time, Manning I, made the stop on that far side, and, and that's big. I know that you guys, you mentioned the secondary comes out there, but Lutz is shifty. So oh, if yeah. you miss that he's first going. tackle, who knows what yeah, he's like going to do. Safety valve he has out there. Yeah. It's a heck of a safety well, valve. Well, what happened is we finally got pressure. Second and 21 for the Eagles. Meevil coming on a blitz, and there it is over the middle. And you got to make that tackle, Back and he truck. does. Good job, good tackle. That was a hot receiver right there. Callahan got knocked down as he let it go, so it's third and long. So here we go, big third down this game, Ed and Ray. You'll want to stop the Eagles right now and get that ball back. They got sure. two receivers to the right, one to the left. They got a slot. They got three on the right side. Callahan calling Stingle back to pass, back to pass, looking, looking, looking over the middle. Oh, it's knocked nice away. Play. Good defense right there by Ream, right? Yep. He knocked it off. It. Broke it up before it down. Eagles must punt. And boy, let's see if we can snap it over his head again. Good pressure off the edge by Tyler Armory, who was standing <laughs> up, and he just bull rushed off that yeah. near side edge, and it helped you, collapse that pocket. Gentlemen, you think Coach Collins and the coach staff have something to say at halftime? It looks like a different team. Hey, you know, defense. you know, sometimes the coaches don't have to say anything. Sometimes it's the captains getting into the other yeah. players' faces, saying, "Hey, we got to go." A nice snap like the last one. I love, would appreciate the same snap if I'm um, Miguel. Um, Let's see what happens. That's a high snap again. Here comes Meeville. Oh, he gets it off, though. Go up and catch it. Go, go. And all the way to the 30, 35, Wolford. He broke a couple tackles. Nice run by Deshaun Wolford. Ed. Got nice it down run. at the 35. I, yep. I was like, oh, no, he's going to catch. I thought well, he was going to. You know what, gonna, though? Whew. This is the time to gamble. You're down two touchdowns. You don't want to, you know, let it bounce all the way to the 10. So let's see if Meville, Ray, and Ed can uh, get another one in the end zone to make this game interesting. It's 27-14 Eagles, 5.46 to go in the third. So here we go. Yeah, the second half couldn't have started off any better. Any better. I, you get that. Unless we got that. And that's why I said at the beginning why I like why you defer to the second half yeah. in most situations. You're exactly right. So Kilburn now with the Bulldogs in there. Wink T split to the left. Motion man goes Wolford. He's going to give it to Manning inside. Manning's got about two. Yeah, you go back to that, Ray, about, you know, deferring it and that. And, you know, that last play of the first half could have really, you know, put a tamper on the people came out. Sure. And they, you know, they're popping him in the mouth right now. Downs at least. Second and eight. Best play Meeble's run on running. Sweep the outside. Yeah, toss sweep. But he ran it inside to keep him on. It's Kilburn calling signals. Motion again. Wolf is going to motion. He got a cut. Cut he goes. He gets to the 40. And he goes back. So he should be on the 40, though. Why is he be on the third. 39? It's going to be third. Da it's going to be third down and five at the 40. That's a bad placement. He got no, to the be 40. At the 40. No, it's not. Oh. Huh. Now it is. Now it is. Not this guy said it's on the 40. So it's third and a long five for the Bulldogs here. I, I'm telling you guys, ball security's got to be a big thing for the Meadville backs. We've watched this whole half. The East Grove City tacklers are consistently trying to rip that ball out, especially yep. the members of the secondary yep. that are coming up to make the stops. Callahan was the one there trying to rip the football out of Wolford. It's a good idea, too, to try to get the ball if one guy stay, if he stood up. And he's going to run that flat pass. Kilburn's got him open, and there it is, 50, 45, all the way down to the 40-yard line. And nice. that's where you wanted him to throw the ball last time. Yes. And Ray called that last time he was open. Kilburn in the shallow for a first down and about the... No, that was Wolford. No, that was right here. This kid Oh, was this shallow? Yes, he was wide open. He caught it. Kilburn in the shallow to the 40-yard line. What are you looking over there for? It was shallow. Wolford. Wolford. I knew that. That's what I said. <laughs> Thank you. I knew it was Wolford. Thank you. <laughs> here we go. Kilburn calling signal. He's going to give it to Mack Track Manning, and he's going oh. nowhere. Again, no blocking. 65 no, right. looking behind. 65 block nobody. Who's that? Oh, 66. Isaac, Isaac Whistler. Didn't block anybody in that one. Hey, he, watching that play through the binoculars, guys, it looked like Mayweather struggled with the exchange a tad bit, and that also helped slow the progression sure. of that play. Sure. And again, you know, I said, well, security, you know, want to make sure if you're having a bad exchange, just secure that football. Don't worry about getting any yardage. Looks like the inside defense has tightened up for Gross City so far this half compared to the first half. Kilburn calling singles, pitch to Manning, getting outside, he cuts it in, and he's still running, gets all the way to the 35-yard line. Nice run by Manning. So it's going to be third down and six. Two downs to get six yards. 
And you know Coach will go for it down here. Oh, yeah, you got down. to. Clock's running Hopefully too. it won't come to that. Hopefully we can pick up the first down on this. Third and a long six. A real long six. Kosick's Decent. been all over the place for Grove City defensively as he made that tackle. Who was it? Kosick. Yeah, he's, been, he's a great player, isn't he? Kosick, a lot of speed in there, linebackers. Beam now needs to go out. Kilman calling signals. There goes Reem. Oh, again, again, again. Oh, my on, again. And not a procedure penalty for the Bulldogs, folks. Kill oh, all night long. It's, I don't know what we're doing here. I don't know why we don't stick Beck in there and run a sweep with Beck right now. Get the speed. Third down and 11 now back at the 41 yard line. Third and long. Three, oh, they've 304 left in third. They've shown the ability to, to throw the ball down the field a couple of times in this game. They need to give him a little more time, Cuban, so he can look off one receiver. So he goes to Bulldogs, third and 10 on a 41 of the Eagles. He's going to give it to Manning along the strap. And he breaks the tackle. He's still going. And down, going to be about. Moroski has, has the football for Gross down, City. I guess that not. ball, I think, wow. guys, I'm going to tell you right now, it started to come out during that pileup. When Manning got lifted up, that ball started to squirt out a little bit, and it finally found its way through some bodies, and Moroski was right there to pick it up. It's unfortunate, but the way Manning got lifted up right there, he was having trouble grabbing a hold of the football, and it squirted out. First down, Eagles. And the Meadville coaching staff said that's awful. Thought it was down also. I don't know if I lifted up or not, but he was down. Not a terrible. It's call. one of those things that's unfortunate that's that we don't have call. the, the we, that we can't watch the Armstrong replay while we're doing the game. That's a terrible call. But just the call. So here we go. See the Meadville defense come up strong again. Motion inside to the big guy Adams. Yep, they had motion all day. Nobody called it. Got about one yard, second and nine. But that was another one where it looked like the exchange yep. between Callahan and Lutz was low, and Lutz had to kind of reach what, down and secure that football. When it's cold, the ball gets slick. Sure, absolutely. We talked about, you know, the turf gets slick a little bit too on a cold night like this. So here we go. Big Adams again. Got to hit him low. It's going to be third and one. He's getting ahead of his steam, line of third and two. Ed, would you stick on that call? Was it a fumble? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Even though he was lifted up, they still have to give him a little bit of time before they blow the whistle dead. But you can see it. I thought the play's over. No. Okay. Hmm. Third and two for the Eagles. The ball on the 48 yard line of the Eagles. Again, big. Come on, Adams is running all over the field. Where's our defensive line at? Adams kind of doing his best Manning impersonation, showing everybody that he's not just a north-south runner or that he, that he was can a nice use his move quick, by Adams. quick feet to cut, sharp little cut out to the outside to where there was space to get the first down. Eagles run the move, the clock's running, 27-14. Gonna give it to Adams again. Tyler Green, and there's the ball, and Meeble's got it this time. Is that Julius? No, Meeble's got it. Collier was the first one to fall on Meeble it. Meeble should have the ball. I don't know what the referees are looking at here. Collier had it, and he still should have it. Collier had the ball. He should still have it. Come on, ref. What? Jeez, come on. Greer ends up with the football, but as wow. you were watching that happen live, Collier fell on it, so Greer, you gotta fall before the officials got there, was able to rip that ball away from Collier. You gotta get it and you gotta bring your knees up to you when you recover a fumble to protect yourself. Wow. Under one minute to go, second and three for the Eagles. Callahan fakes the handoff and he goes nowhere. Good night, Callahan, have a nice drop. Good night, Callahan. You ain't going nowhere on a run. I tell you what, Isaiah Manning does not, no. not uh, get bit out on that fake, does he? Callahan's not going to go anywhere. He doesn't get faked out. Play. He's playing the defensive game of a lifetime. Third and five for the Eagles. They have the ball on Meebles 36. 
third and five at the 36. Now uh, they turn to get their play. Good defense right there. Oh. There's a flag, late flag after that. What is that flag for? Probably on us. For what? But yet they didn't call it on them back in the first half. What did they call? Pass interference, probably. I think it's a legal block. Behind the back, below the waist. Let's see. Not sure. The flag was late. Yeah, I don't think, think it was on. Moreland, Moreland had a little bit of a grab on Lutz before Lutz got the separation to make the catch, but this happened well after yeah, that. that was after. This was well after that. I'm not sure what the penalty is, but it came late. It's going to be against the Eagles. They're going to bring the play back. 7.5 seconds left in the third. Ed's right on that. Good job, Ed. Uh, Ray, don't let me talk. <laughs> he can talk. <laughs> me? I mean, it was a joke. Right? I know. <laughs> I'm smiling. People can't see it, but I'm smiling. <laughs> oh, there you go. That would be the last play of the third quarter. So at the end of three, it is Eagles 27 to Bulldogs 14. We'll be back with the fourth quarter at the 30 second. Game 27 to 14, Eagles. It's Second been an entertaining 11. game, I'll tell you. So, Callahan at the pistol formation right now. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Got to know where Muhammad is right now. He's split way right. Trey Adams, the big fullback inside. You know, and they spread you out like this, Randy Ron Adams. There's not a lot of people left to tackle. No. no that, 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 you have to make sure you uh, take care of this at the point of attack. Callahan going to fake it to him. He's got plenty of time. He runs to his right now on the duress. Throws wide open. Oh, he broke the tackle, too. Yeah, Lutz squirted out of the arms of Miles Moreland to take it inside the five-yard line. That was Landon Beck trying to get him on the tackle. So, Grove City first in goal on what about the four? Three. Trey Adams. Three-yard line. There goes the big guy, Adams. Adams goes inside, and he is one yard long. Okay. Tommy Pollard on the tackle. Okay. Pollard's had a nice game. Thanks. Upended him just enough to where that knee hit at yeah, the Tommy one as he tried to barrel roll Adams into the end gonna, zone. They're going to give it to Adams again, but the house, there it is. Adams inside, and that time he no. does not make it, so it's going to be third and goal. Oh, Manning had a hold of him from the waist on the backside, and is the pile on covers. You had Pollard in there. You had Armory in there as well, trying to keep him out of the end zone. So third and one for the Eagles, but 10-10 to go in this game, the clock running. 27-14 Eagles. Eagles are, Eagles are actually going to huddle. I wonder if they're going to go under center here and run a sneak. I think this is about a half a football length away from the end zone. Under center and run a sneak? I mean, why take it back? Let's see. Nope, they're going to go in a shotgun for him, on a pistol. Let's we'll see if he fakes to Adams and runs it himself. Callahan's going to get it, and he's going to give it again. He goes outside, touchdown. Nice run by Adams. He runs to his right. He gets in the end zone, and that makes it 33 to 14 Eagles. Well, he went left, and he realized there was a big, there was a slew of bodies in that middle, and all he had to do was just make a quick little cut to the right, and there was just nothing but the blue part of the end zone here at Greenville. You know, something that New England does well with their quarterback, Brady, when he runs a sneak, he never runs up the middle. He actually runs to the tackle side because he says most people are concentrating on the middle. So Trey Adams did a nice job getting that in. He's had a good game, Trey Adams. Yeah, I was telling you why throw it to him, why throw it to him. Well, at the end of the second quarter, they throw it to him over there. Yeah. Just to let you know that. Yeah. That wasn't up here at that time. No. Well, you mentioned, too, it, right. with, and they were using him uh, as a decoy on the one play with the, with the cast on his hand. But still, just his mere presence. Going for two, and they got it. So the Eagles get two, so it's 35 14. So they fumbled, Meal couldn't get the ball. So there's a kick right there, taking it at the 20. John T. Brown. Running sideways again. I don't know why we run sideways, Ed. Yeah, I agree with you 100% there. He would have had a, a lot more room if he would have stayed on the short side of the field, just running north and south. He set up a return to that side. It ain't going to happen. 
All right, Meville down 35 to 14. 9.35 to go. Ball on their own 22 yard line. They don't have the big strike offense, Ed. You need to strike quickly here. I've seen it's where you, you miss a guy like Journey Brown who could have yeah. turned one like this no real quick. Wolford now runs off tackle, gets to about the 25, 26 yard line. I think Wolford got three. I mean, you still have that home run ability with Manning, but I think in this type of situation, the Grove City defense knowing the situation. Oh, yeah. You know, I've been really happy like with, that. with Wolford's play, the, you know, the yep. better half of the second uh, half of the season. No doubt. And this was actually the first game all year our secondary broke down. They played well all year until tonight. Get the Manning inside. Manning's going to get about two. So it'll be third and five for the Bulldogs. And Tyler Greer running into make that tackle for Grove City. And, you know, Grove City doesn't mind the fact that Meadville oh, no. is taking their time right Even now if on they offense. Score, they take five minutes, they're not going to care. The clock is on Grove City's side also. I'm not sure what Kilburn. Got a flat pass first down to Wolford. Nice play by Wolford. Good hands right there. Yep. Well, gentlemen, uh, not you, a flag. You, not a flag, Ed. Yeah, it's oh. right there at the right Isn't close to that far them? hash mark there on the 29-yard line. How is it holding? Wow, they called holding on me, but they've been holding all night. The other team. Wow. Going back to a, a point that you made earlier, Mike. It, you know, with Meadville. This will be something that they can carry into next season, I think, yeah. as part of this offense. You know, the, these some of these Diversity. quick strike plays, especially yeah. on first down. I think this is something that, you know, with Meadville's wing T offense, if you develop these type of passing plays that you can run in early down situations and keep you ahead of the sticks, I think this is something that they should really work on in the off, you know, no when doubt. they get ready to go into camp and right. stuff next year. Bulldogs are two of nine on third down. That hasn't been a great down, but a lot of times on third down, Ray, it's been like this, third and 13, third and 15, third and 18. Those are third downs that are tough for the dogs to capitalize at. Yeah, let's see what happens here. I'm just like. Kilburn rolls out the pass and he gets lambasted about three tackles. Here's a late flag and that should be a penalty against the Eagles that time, late hit. That's gonna be rough in the passer. It's a late hit. That is a I think that was a really good call. I do, too, after I the do. other calls I've seen tonight. Yeah. Smither uh, was the one who would, would be credited with the sack. Personal foul is a first down. No, not on back in high school. Oh. Personal foul. First man, that's first down. That's, that's going to be because of the, yeah, because of the right. yardage on the play. First down on a personal foul on that one. Still be third down though. So it'll be third and. So that's definitely a more manageable third down for the Meadville offense. Against the Eagles will make it third yes. and four. Or five. Personal foul. We were discussing this at the General McLean broadcast. Not an automatic first down in the high school level. Which is really interesting to me. You think it would Th be? There are some there are some interesting rule that variations. Makes no sense if you care about kids being hurt. Throw it to him. First down, Bulldogs. Don't stop running. Oh, Reem got undercut, but he has the first down. But Callahan diving in there, yep. taking him out low. Yeah, yeah. We, Landon that, Beck coming in as quarterback now. That's a discussion you could have about the, you know a lot of different rules. And I, I just mentioned too some of the ones they implemented this year on that pop off uh, yeah, on side like, kick. I, I agree with it that. It keeps the player safe, and that was why. Foul should be a first down. I agree. I don't care. It was on our team or the other team. Beck now in the quarterback for Kilburn on the center. Gets the call. Beck's going to roll and stop, and he's going to run. Look at this run by Beck. 40, 45, 50, 45, 40. Beck all the way down to the 32-yard line. He was going to throw the waggle pass, Ed, and he had a defender in his face, tucked it and ran right through. And you like to see that with that young well, kid, don't you? It, I knew he was going to keep it and run because <laughs> the kid has wheels. 
but I mean he can throw too. So it's a good mix up with Kilburn and uh, Landon Beck. I like to see this mix up a lot next. I would like to year. see you know, him. Next year I like to see these two. I would like to see Beck as running back next year, honestly. Uh, and you have, and you've only, you know, like people are only going to see it on film in this like game, yeah. so they might not be thinking about it. Yeah. True. Good point. Kilburn now. He's going to give it to Mack Truck Manning, and he's going to go too far. As the, uh, Back to the line of scrimmage. One of our linemen is blocked into Manning. He didn't get off the ball. It was, oh, that's our, that's and our again, wing. That's our wing. Didn't get a block. This is the, the, the disadvantage of, of the offense that you run because tick, tick, tick. Yeah, down to seven minutes left in the game, 35-14. I'd like to get another touchdown on the beef up Grove City's defensive stats. They've only averaged seven points a game. The Eagles got 14 tonight. Seth Davis checks in calling signals. He's going to roll to his right. He's going to throw. And he's got a receiver. Wolford is about the 27. Be about third, third down. Be third yards. down to five. In four down territory. So uh, get two downs to get five. Going to get that uh, dime or nickel package in as you see one of the D linemen. That's actually Kosick running out there. And they. Brought okay, one of their D back. Greer in. To both of you, Meevil scores onside kick. You got an onside kick now. Sure. I mean, why not? And again, not being able to do that pop up kick off the right. turf, it changes right. your strategies and how you're able to execute onside kicks. Meevil comes out. First and third and four. Go with the Manning on a sweep. Manning looking, looking, looking. He's going to cut inside. Got the first down and more as he goes inside the 20 to about the 17 yard line of the Eagles. Just shows you the vision of Manning, Ed. You know, neither one of those blocks were great on that far side, and he just kind of created his own lane, just being patient. Bet coming back in. I think, too, with Beeson. That's also, you know, I know our line was better last year, but Kearney Brown makes your line look good, too. Oh, yeah, how many times have <laughs> we been doing games together where you outran a block? Yeah, I mean, hey, it's, you know. Landon Beck in a quarterback again for the dogs. Beck's going to roll to his right, looking, looking. He's going to run it. Beck's going to cut inside. He gets high hurdle to about the 11. No, down at the, inside the 10. And, and the landed 10. right there. He, he had his brother, Destin Beck, actually. No, out no that's not his brother. They're not related. Okay, they're not related. Not related. Okay, well, thanks for correcting me on that's that. That's okay. But anyway, that information before the game would have been more helpful, but you didn't ask. <laughs> what did Destin say? What did he do though? What did Beck do? I would say he would. He was the lead blocker oh. if he stayed on running out to the right hand side instead of cutting between the hash marks. Here we now get the man. Here's a big hole for Manning. First down inside the seven yard line for the Bulldogs. Nice drive for Meadville right here. They've shown the type of pride that this program has right now. Yep. The coach calls and the staff here in the yep. second half. They did not give up. They made a game of it again. 35-21. You know, they're probably not going to overcome this deficit, no. but they only they're announcing up, their presence. They only gave up seven points in this half. Keyshawn Arnold wide to the left. Keyshawn's onside this time. Kierbrun calling signals. And we go, oh boy. Oh boy, Mike says. <laughs> With his head down. <laughs> Ball start, Meadville. Meadville has nine penalties. Ed, one more. We got our average for the year. Ten. We yep. Average ten penalties yep. a game this year, and we're in three. So figure that. There's a couple games we had 13, 14, 15. <laughs> so Meadville moves it back Just to the Just mental mistakes. 5:45 to go. 35-14 in favor of the Eagles. Miles Moreland goes to the left side. Wing T formation. Kilburn's going to throw it, throw it, throw it. Who's he throwing it to? He can't, that was not a good pass. No, nah, he had uh, he was, throw it. He had three people covering him. He's throwing it. Should have thrown it out to Miles Moreland. One on one, let him go up for it. Second and 13. I'd like to see Beck back in there rolling that rollout play here, Ed. Definitely a situation where he got locked on one guy. And as Ed mentioned, three players right there, and Muhammad should have had an easy pick, actually. Oh, yeah. Couldn't hold on to it in well, the end Well, thank God so for uh, Julius breaking it up. After the game, lock, stock, yep. Here we go. Right. Off the Manning. 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 Oh, a nice defensive play there. Tyler Greer. Greer with a Greer. terrific play in space. Tyler Greer and his band of Maria. Put Beck in there, run. He's coming in. 
Yeah. <laughs> the way Greer flipped up after that, he almost did a pirouette. He did. Greer made a nice play <laughs> he on that tackle. He tackled Manning for a loss of one. So it's second and third and 13 for the Bulldogs. Any 13 yards to get a touchdown. It's third and goal. 4 six forty four forty five to go in this game. Back under center. Beck's on the center. Beck's going to run away from that guy. Throw it. Good job. Well, the, yeah, the, the issue on this is, is there's nobody there. There's no attention to the ground. It, well, but remember, there's no tackle blocks in the high school game. So this is what they're going to discuss right here. That we This happened last week in the game, and I talked about it against General McLean. There is no tackle box in high school football. But if they have the split end there is what the coaches are telling us. So that's probably what the officials are talking about right now. I didn't see, I didn't see anybody there. But. They're just waiting for the officials to have the referees yeah, yeah, tossing yeah, the flag too. back in. Now, they are going to call it. They're not going to say somebody's not there. Well, not the Meadville coaches were left. saying that the split end was in the fray on that far side. I didn't see anybody do but <laughs> I didn't see anybody. Well, there's people bunched up on that side, so if he was, I didn't see him. It's also tough for a young kid to roll to the left. Well, there was so much pressure coming off of that side, yeah, no and block. he did a good job of getting away from the initial pressure. He but did. He did. There wasn't but much he could really fourth do. Fourth and goal from the 31. Wow. Fourth and goal from 31. Here comes again. Nice catch. <laughs> Reem to the 20, cuts back to the 15, to the 10, and he get down. What an effort by Reem, though. Back to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah. <laughs> and for, first down for the Eagles. For Reem to, to make that catch, the ball was overthrown. He reaches out. He yeah. deflects the ball to himself to make the catch. And a tremendous play by Reem, and he almost, <laughs> almost got under, in. Kilburn was under duress again, too. He was getting Really rushed. So now the Eagles with 4.34 to go up, 35 to 14. Eagles will be the District 10 champs this year, Ray. And this is uh, where you mean, Will, you want to get a stop and get another shot, trying to put some points on the board before the end of the game, just for, you know, I know, again, it's something that's wish, overused, but for pride. Got to wish the Eagles good luck this year, and they, they can be a tough out in the playoffs. I just still don't think they're going to get past the whip hill. No, nobody does. Well, it happens on occasion. Yeah, once so every, you never know. Once every eight years. Here we go. Let's just going to take it and run. And this time, Evil's there to. Let's get about one or two yards in that with 420 to go. As we wind down the Evil football season of 2017. Successful season in many regards. Ended up eight and four. Got back to the District 10 Championship game. More than a lot of people thought, except for Ed. So, you know that's not right. <laughs> except for you and the coach. Oh, oh, oh. Most yeah. people didn't think they get this far. And Great I'll say, I'll go out and too. say it. I think they're going to contend for the D10 title next year. Wow. I think they're a year away. No, I think I they're going to be young right. next year. Here we go. Anyway, it's second and seven for the Eagles. They let the clock run, and that's smart. They're looking at. Callahan's waiting for the uh, guy to put his hand up. Now will just wait for the umpire. There, there it is. is. There's the 10-second yeah. mark. Callahan now is going to give it to the big guy. Adams is running, but stumbling, bumbling, first down. Boy, this kid's a good player. I like that kid running the ball. And, you know, Ed and Ray, they do have a lot to defend. you got to defend everything, the whole field against this team. Yeah, basically from sideline to sideline, as you, as you said, because of all the different options they have on the offensive side of the ball. Much better Grove City team last year. Much better. So it's first and 10 for the Eagles with 310 o'clock running the ball on the Bulldog 21-yard line. 35-14 Eagles, Callahan in the shotgun. He's going to give it to big guy Adams again. Adams rumbling, bumbling, stumbling, gets about four yards. Does he run high to you, Ed? Yeah, I don't see him lowering his shoulder at all. No. Imagine and if he would lower his shoulder. as a coach, what do, you, what do you think of that play design where they fake that jet sweep before the ball is even snapped? What do you think that does to the defense? Doing? Kind of throws them off guard a little does? bit. Yeah, and that's they, maybe your outside backers. If they start peeking at that, they might start angling that way, reading yes. the jet. Yes. Here we go, second and seven. Callahan looks to his right, 2.30 to the clock running. 35-14 Eagles, 
as the clock is winding down on the Bulldog season, as the players now on the sideline realize that there'll be no practice next week in Meadville. Let's run both ways. Inside a big Trey Adams again. He rumbles, bumbles, stumbles, and he goes. Nice running. This is when the fullback likes the game because he knows he's going to get it. He's running over people. Two minutes to go. Oh, Meeble takes the timeout. No, first down. That's why the clock stopped. 35-14 Eagles. Adams checks out. Greer back in. Eagles about to win their first District 10 title since knocking off Cathedral Prep in the 2011 season, the year for the prep, that, that team, that prep team would win a state title the I next year. A, that yeah. Grove City team was unbelievable. Uh, I was a big happy person when the Eagles knocked them off, and the, I was happier when Cash did it four years later. I remember a lot of the names from that team. Tyler Dagress was the, their option quarterback, and Eric Recker, and they had a young man by the name of Foster Resner who just finished his career up at Gannon in well, the it's secondary. It's nice to see the two local public schools knocked off prep. Grove City, and then uh, six years later, it would be Cash. I was to see. It was only a couple of seasons later it that was, Cash did it in the AAA yep. game. It was nice to see. Because Grove City and, and Cash have to live within their boundaries. 115, the clock moving, 35 to 14. Second and five. Somebody getting arrested over there. They look down there and see the cop with his lights on. <laughs> Somebody getting pulled over. Is it? See that? Looks like a house arrest. <laughs> Let's now get the ball to Big Trey Adams again. This time he stopped. Good tackle right there. Let's give credit to that young man. Destin Beck. Destin Beck. He's playing his last game. He's led Meevil in tackles this year. He's played outstanding football. Ed. And, guys, you got to argue that this senior class of Meadville is up there with some of the greatest senior classes of all time. I mean, they got a D10 title under their belt. They went to a D10 title game. Yep. Two, 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 two D10 title games in two years is nothing to sneeze at. A lot of these kids, going to be a lot of talent to replace next year. And I try to think Meeble's going to be a young team. Grove City coaches are hugging each other over there. Grove City players ready to run on the field. And this is it. This game is over. Grove City wins the D10 title 35-14 to 14 over the Bulldogs. We're going to take a one-minute break and come back with the final comments about the Bulldog season of this year. It was a great year. We'll be back in one minute. Bulldog football was 94.3 and also on the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network. 